All right, I am trying to get this door open. It gets stuck in the bottom. Oh, there we go. But anyways, I'm going to show you what scientists call a mess. And again, I will say this, I don't think the guy that set up this machine originally was an industrial electrician because why the heck are you putting a big transformer right next to analog servo drives where electromagnetic noise is detrimental to your performance? All right, so I'm back out here on the mill, and yesterday I kind of set up so all the coolant lines in the mill and everything are flushed out from all the junk that was in there originally, so I just ran a few gallons, like 10 gallons through it just to, you know, flow everything and get rid of all the junk. But then I was thinking, you know, it would be really nice to have one of those coolant rings that go like around the spindle. That way you got coolant like coming directly down where you need it and you can set it up. So I've got this line and it doesn't fit well enough. And as it was coming along, it was pushing that line more and more uh, to a 90 degree just stretching it out and I don't want the coolant to come out of that at a decent pressure and come and take a 90 degree curve and if it's tight enough blow it out and just flood coolant down that would be a mess I do let me show you the pump here's the pump it's one quarter or yeah one quarter horsepower I think the back side so, yeah, now I got that set up and it's got a lot of pressure, surprising amount of pressure. I looked up a kind of comparable pumps, I'd say, um, and for the Tormach machines, I think it's an eighth horsepower, which from what I hear, Tormach coolant pumps are more like, uh, instead of, you know, flood coolant, they're more like trickle coolant. So. This should be more than capable of, you know, clearing out chips from a pocket or something like that. And if not, I've got this line here for, you know, air blasts. Anyways, I'm going to go up there and show you that, that tank real quick. All right, now this, I don't know how well that's showing up on camera. I can't hardly see the screen. This is the tank itself, so you'd have multiple tanks to skim off, say up here, get everything up, then anything that wants to fall down, any particulates, any chips that get back in here, fall down to the bottom, and then over here, anything that's floating gets trapped in here, and then I will probably put the uh, pump itself in this large one. I think it was originally supposed to go in this small one right here uh, But there's an issue with that. It's too wide. So It doesn't fit at all You can see I just have it out here drying in the Sun um, Whatever coolant they had originally in here. It was emulsion. So it had an emulsion is Coolant that has oil that's atomized into it um, And it ate away the paint so I'm just trying to have it dry before it rusts. Oh, and another thing is a little hex head screws that keep it from, I don't know if this is focusing or not, keep it from, um, you know, keep the oil in there. And so when you want to drain the oil, you just take those out. Uh, they don't fit nicely at all. And I put Teflon tape around them. And even with Teflon tape around them, they tend to leak. So. I think I'm just going to epoxy that up and uh, have to deal with it occasionally because if not, I'm going to have a leak even with uh, a lot of that tape. So that'd be fun. All right, I am trying to get this door open. It gets stuck in the bottom. Oh, there we go. There we go. We're open now. So, and we're totally off. It's unplugged. We're not going to go execute it. But anyways, I'm going to show you what scientists call a mess. Um, in fact, any industrial engineer will cringe at this. Whoever set up this machine originally, um, they didn't cut any wires length. In fact, as it is, as I have it, um, everything's wired up pro appropriately, but 
they took all this extra wire and they jammed it into this panduit. And so when I went in there and removed a lot of the old controller, all this wire from the conduit, some, I call it panduit, I think panduit's a name brand. Um, and so I'm pulling all this wire out and there's a lot of it and almost no place to go because they filled it so so full. Um, you can see my wiring like over here looks not the greatest but not bad but then wherever like they just zip tied this this is a the uh, power out from from it and this capacitor should be well drained by now i'm not in danger of frying myself but they just zip tied it together and they shoved it in there so for the time being that's what this mess is then i came in here and i put this little bit of din rail and let's see if we can see it this is going to be for the spindle itself so Power is going to come in. Right now I have 110 coming into the breaker slash... It's got a big breaker switch, but they, they run to fuses. It's it's really just fused. Anyways, I've only got 110 going in there, and that's playing my servos. So when I get the... Let me get a pointer. When I get the 220 in here, that guy, that little terminal over there, is going to have probably the red line running to it. Um, so right in there and again this machine is only 440 because of this big transformer here and again I'll say this I don't think the guy that set up this machine originally was an industrial electrician because why the heck are you putting a big transformer right next to analog servo drives where electromagnetic noise is detrimental to your performance so yeah Good news is the the guy that did this left all of his line, you know, just zip tied together so I can actually move things around without having to recut wire and, you know, solder it up myself. That is good news. Uh, believe it or not, bad news is it's a mess. So, yeah, that's what we got going on in here. You can see that guy's handiwork, whoever the heck he was. Um, this big line here. That is just for the spindle. This is going to be tucked away. This one's going to be tucked away. That one's going to be tucked away. We're just kind of like in an intermediate spot where I have yet to clean up. I think that's about it. Uh, the din rail is really the only thing that's new and mentioning that the wire is a mess in here because the guy just stuffed it into that wire conduit. Anyways, if you've suffered through this, thank you for watching. If you somehow like this, you know, drop a like do all that good stuff. It's been a long time since I've done a vlog style video like this. Uh, I really think they're the way to go just because they're way, way easier to do. Um, there's no scripting involved, just editing. So anyways, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.